This is the Wednesday, November 4th, 2020 meeting of the Berlin Personnel Committee. As a preliminary matter, please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you. Take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Uh, this is Claire Pond, Chair of the Personnel Committee. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me prior to me calling the meeting to order. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Tom Bradley, now you gotta take yeah. off mute, okay. <laughs> Hold on, can okay. you hear me? <laughs> Sue Terrian. I'm here. Okay. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Margaret Nidowitz. Margaret's here. June Baird. Oh, I'm Good sorry. Here. June. June That's all right. Colin, I'm sorry. We will go by anything. Yes, that is me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So with the quorum of the board present, I call this meeting to order at 6.32 p.m. on, on Wednesday, November 4th. Okay, so um, the first thing we want to do is I had sent out the October 1st minutes um, when we were going to have our meeting in October and I, I like to see what you thought the minutes. I make a motion to accept the minutes as written. Okay. I'll second that motion. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Claire Pond. Aye. Now we have gotta have Tom unmute himself to talk. I know. Tom, were the minutes okay? Can you hear me? Yep, yep. now I can. Okay, but I can't see him. <laughs> I don't know what I touched. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anybody. We'll Charles, talk. Oh. Do you approve the minutes that we just voted on? Yes. Okay. Great. But it's not cracking now either. Oh, there it no. goes. Okay. All right. The second item on our agenda is... Um, the new business, which is, we can start with the personnel action forms. And there were a number of them that Margaret sent to us ahead of time. And I had the chance to take a look at them. Um, do you, Margaret, do you want us to go through them individually or just name them all off and then do them as a group? Is that all right? That would, yeah, that would be great. That would be... Okay, More so the, the first one was John Mitchell, a new hire for the higher highway department. The second one was Eric Canavos, a resignation from fire and EMS. The third one is Tom Menard, um, a highway dis, um, department dismissal. The fourth one was David Pierce, a resignation from the board of assessors. And number five was Stephen Phillips, a new hire for the highway department. So I think we had all of those. I did have one question I wanted to ask on the David Pierce resignation for the Board of Assessors. Mm -hmm. I was just curious about that one because I know that he hasn't been on, if I look at all the minutes of the Board of Assessors that they have, um, he hasn't been in the meeting since um, um, April, May. So I was just curious how that, I mean, is that okay for a person to just not go to the meetings or? Yeah, so the, the issue with this particular um, personnel action form was that although he dated his resignation July 22nd, the town clerk's office did not receive it until September 18th, which, okay. um, at, which under chapter, chapter 41, section 
109 of the Mass General Laws, the resignation does not become effective until the town clerk receives it. So that's why the termination date or the resignation date has to reflect the town clerk's receipt. Okay. All right. All right, I was just curious about that because I know it's a paid position and I, I didn't know if, you know, how that works. So um, that was really the, uh, did anybody else have any questions on any of those PAS? No, uh, no questions on those. I make a motion that we approve all of the PAS. Okay. I will second it. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor then say aye. I, Claire Pond. Sue, I. Tom Bradley, I. Okay, great. Okay. Right. And um, the next item on the agenda was the um, whether there are any uh, position um, reviews or advertising that we need to take a look at. There is none um, actively at the moment. Um, I do know that Chief Galvin is um, almost ready to recommend appointment of the um, full-time officer uh, who he's interviewed for and has all kind has had all kinds of pre-employment testing, um, but no no reviews and no current advertising. Okay. All right. Oh, I did want to mention too, when I came in, I had come in to vote and I had to pick up something out of the personnel box. And um, I did in the personnel box was another PAF that I guess I, I need to send it back in. Um, oh. It went into the personnel box in era before it went to you guys. So it's, it's, I want to make sure that it gets back to the board, to the assessors department so that it can get to the right people. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, oh, it was in an envelope. I'm sorry. I got it home and I'm like, oh, darn it. So, um, oh no. Is it a new one? I hope, or has it been sitting there for a while? Um, it's, it was that reduction in hours that we had talked oh. about at one point. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So I right. will send that back in um, okay. to everybody so that you guys can go through the pro proper process with that. Um, okay. The next piece was any position vacancies or status reports that we should know about? No, I just mentioned the uh, police department, so that's in process. Yep. Uh, but other than that, um, I know uh, the fire chief is uh, continually um, uh, working on filling, you know, call positions and things like that, but um, there is nothing new that I know of. Okay. All right, then the next piece is, um, was there any other, uh, next piece under other new business, I was going to bring up the performance evaluations. Should we bring that up now? Is that okay with everybody? Yep. Okay, so um, we received a spreadsheet. Thank you, Sue, very much for going through all those. That was phenomenal. Thank you. Um, that really helps our, our, our team go through this and, and make sure that we know what's going on and not having them physically in front of us all the time and, and being able to have an open meeting with all of us sitting there to discuss it. Um, uh, it really worked out beautiful. So, um, Good so, spreadsheet, right? Yes. I know. Yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs> nice just, job, so. Just be uh, proud of me. Yeah. <laughs> so how do we want to approach this? Sue, do you want to talk a little bit about the ones that you, you wanted to uh, bring to our attention and um, have the committee determine because some of these are ones that we've already um, supported during earlier discussions that the committees had. And Many of them are just things that we've supported, especially the accounting clerk. I thought yeah. that's what we've talked about many times. Mm -hmm. That was very much supported. 
and along with some of the other clerk, land use clerk, right? Um, that showed a lot of the same things that we've been saying all along is that that job might need to be evaluated or have when um, Sandy does her job descriptions, that's something we might want to look into. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did have a couple questions on some. Um, and one of them is fire department. We have two people that we got evaluations on that I thought were on call. We've never signed any PAFs on them mm. as full-time. And I was just unclear on why they were there. Um, so I can speak to a couple of them. I actually, in the first column, I added the position titles and noted, um, you know, noted the specific position. So with uh, two of the employee, employees, one is a full-time EMT who is per diem. So he's actually a regular per diem now. Um, the other is a full-time EMT paramedic who is also per diem. So those were the only two per diems that we got the reviews on. Now per diem only started last October. So that's probably why this isn't something that's really in the forefront. This is relatively new, but there are more per diems than this. And I'll talk to the chief to see what the status is for those. I thought that, yeah, that should be consistent on the department. And then I honestly had two that I have a little issue with, but I think it's not the employees, but more the writing of the eval. Um, I have a little issue with the transfer station. There were a lot of not applicables in their evaluations. And last year we had an issue with an employee and not following policies. And this year we had policies and procedures that's not applicable. And I just feel that that's kind of a, mm. it's a little bit offensive in that we asked them to create policies and procedures in writing. And now this year it's just not applicable. Okay. So that was one. And the other one that I, you can tell, I read them all a million times. Um, another one, which is kind of the same, is our animal control officer. It's a position that was, you know, in question and being evaluated. And policies and procedures are not applicable. And organization and those things are very important in that job. So I feel like we shouldn't really be looking at those until the evals are complete. Okay. Um, and I think, so what was the other one besides, um, oh, the distracted. Animal, animal control oh. officer. Okay. It came off and um, I had another question, very general question too, is the animal inspector. I wanted to know if those inspections, if how we find out if those are state mandated or town mandated. So those um, animal inspector is governed uh, strictly by statute. It's all, it's all governed by state statute. So they get their um, job duties. In fact, I thought I had printed them at some point. They get their job duties from um, the Department of Agricultural Resources, believe it or not. They're the ones that specify the duties of the animal inspector. Right. So, um, so to answer the question, their, their duties, their inspections are under state regulations. Okay, well, I think that might be another um, position that we need to talk to their supervisor about. Did we, on the ones that Sue brought up, uh, specifically the, um, the animal control officer, did we get finally get a, uh, job description on that one and I, I guess I know we sent out um, I know that Sandy sent out all the job descriptions to all the departments did we get any changes or any updates or revisions to 
um, any of the positions that Sue just brought up? Not of, not to those at all. We only got five total proposed revisions to the wow. um, consultants' drafts. Okay, all right. Now for it. Because some of these, um, Sue was definitely a lot of them. It says refer to the HR consultant sheets and. Um, a lot of the ones that she has refer to HR consultants sheets really speak to the ones that we kind of talked about already during right. our um, discussions. The ones that have one asterisk were yep. substantially below. Yep. Um, we definitely have some people in the library that yep. are substantially below. Okay. And the ones with two asterisks were substantially above yep. the rate according to her sheets. Okay. All right. Um, excuse, excuse me through the chair. Um, yeah. There are, I, I, I mean, I do see, and I, I know that you've seen them too, the draft job descriptions from um, Sandy. Um, she does have the drafts for animal control officer and animal inspector. Oh, good. Um, okay. uh, yeah. So um, okay. if, if they don't exist, they, they can. All right. And I guess I think that our committee needs to look closer at the job descriptions of the other positions, Sue, that that you bring up here, that we need to um, take a look at the... Um, and I don't think any of them are difficult. I think it's a quick fix and clarification and... Right. right. I don't think it is a huge red flag. Yep. And on a very positive note, we had one employee that we thought um, had to be addressed with a PPE last year. And the evaluation for that individual this year was marked improvement. And I think that's a good thing to bring up too, that yep. it worked out. Yep. The department and everything got better. That's good. That's good. I saw that. That's great. Um, do we need to get into details right now in terms of what our recommendations are on these? Or is this something that you need us to kind of mull over and? Well, uh, I, basically the sooner the better because we are gonna be preparing now for the FY22 budget process oh, now. Yep. Okay. Um, as you know, there is a contingency line in the current year's budget that could make the wage adjustments to bring some of the significantly lower paid positions up to market. Okay. Um, so to be able to sort those out early in the budget process would allow departments to then be able to make COLA adjustments if there are recommendations for COLA for next year okay. um, based on the adjusted wages. Okay. All right. All right, so in terms of some of these are recommendations that we had already made, and I don't have my thing open right at the moment to take a look at those. Um, I do, I did bring, um, and I sent to Sue and to Tom the um, information on the consumer price index so we could talk about that a little bit but I do not have my data right now in front of me on what we have recommended. Um, oh, I do have, um, oh, it's on the computer and I don't know how to do both of them at the same time. Um, the recommendations that we had, um, that Sandy had made for the specific positions that, um, that Sue had outlined here. I think the I think the committee needs to take a look and see um, the ones that have the one asterisk. There's still a question on a job description for one of them, the board of health clerk. I think you know the ones that we are talking about that we have already recommended that should get a pay increase and at least get up to yep. market range i think we've already discussed most of them yep 
I think the two library employees yep. that are well below, I think the clerks are all below the others in yep. other surrounding towns. I'm sorry, I'm reading and talking at the same time. That's okay. So and do we want to go down down the list and and go that route and that way we can kind of follow along? Like the Okay. The, the very first I, one, the accounting clerk. I think are we still thinking about keeping her as an accounting clerk or changing her position to an assistant accountant, which I think we've discussed now for a year and a half that I've been on personnel. Yeah. She does more than a clerk's job. Did um, June's here and she can. Yeah. June, did, was there any change in the job description? Did you take a look at that when you were redoing them with Sandy? I did. I believe I had attached it to yep. the review. She did. Um, the, I, I, I fully stand behind what you're saying as far as an assistant accountant. The only problem is, is she doesn't, wouldn't have the official title because there is a, um, she needs to have a little bit more schooling. Yep. And it's a huge difference, I believe, in pay between an assistant accountant versus a clerk. Right. Well, then at least her pay should reflect a little bit of what she's taking on yes. in that office. Even if we don't change the title, I think her pay should be a little more reflective of just I think I, think I requested that if there was a possibility of having an in-between, because I would love to be able to get maybe someday a file clerk or an accounting mm -hmm. clerk to actually do clerical type stuff. Um, so I don't know if we could change her to be more of an administrative or assistant to assistant the accountant. to the accountant type of a thing versus an actual assistant town accountant because that's an actual title. Yep. Yeah. I would support anything like that. Yeah. I I agree because I know and she's the only, doing. The only issue there would be is that I think when they did the investigation as far as where the payroll would stand, they definitely went as a clerk based yeah. on what we had seen and the people that were comparable were doing clerical work only as in like file clerk. They weren't right. actual clerks doing anything else. Right. So that would be my only concern. Yeah. Okay, so we need to look at that one a little bit closer, I think. Um, and then we move down to the uh, Board of Health clerk. Um, I'm just looking to see. Uh, this this position is currently on the same level as a council on aging van driver, transfer station attendant, and custodian. Yep. So grade four. Yeah. Should have put the grades and steps in here. That probably would have been easy to. I know. I, I should have. I'm sorry. That's, no. That's all right. No. You did a, a tremendous <laughs> that job. That would be easy to do. Mm -hmm. We can do that. I I think when I read the the board of health clerk I was just unsure about how many like real hours and is she you know I think I want a little more detail you know because she may be right on target yeah um we'll have to ask we'll have to ask for that um she has picked up some hours uh, this year and obviously some responsibilities, I think, um, associated with COVID, but um, she has begun uh, doing the board's minutes. She's attending the Board of Health meetings to take their minutes. So she has picked up some duties. So we could ask uh, Board of Health for more detail. Okay. And I'm sorry, I don't have that other those other items in front of me before we're sitting here talking. <laughs> uh, so for the next meeting, we will, I will definitely be prepared to discuss the, um, the rates and all that. I didn't pull that well, actually, out. Um, who's the next one? Um, the next one is um, COA director, which we know needed to get upgraded somewhat. She did get more than previous. Mm -hmm. 
but she's uh, the position is still way below right. the market it looks like yep And so, then, yeah. No, go ahead. So, also, I know that. Go, go ahead, June. Sorry. Just an FYI, Donna works four hours um, for the. I'm sorry, for the Board of Health clerk. She works four hours a week as of okay. right now. Okay. Four hours a week. Okay, good. All right. On the COA director, um, is. Sandy's going to be giving us those additional towns. Yes. So that will be part of the process on that, um, mm -hmm. on some of these. But at least we could take a look at at least getting them bumped up a little bit until such time as we have the full report. Mm -hmm. um, do we know when? <laughs> I don't yet, and I am going to. I am going to put. Well, I'm going to poke Sandy again tomorrow. I, I provided an update on October 23rd, um, yep. but yeah, we we just we simply need those three towns. We need to be able to work from some sort of draft that includes them, so you can actually see the full picture. Right, and see what like what a new minimum would be or a new um, new range would be, so that we'd have some some inkling on how we might be able to um, price these out, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, Sue? And then next we have our children's librarian who is well below market rate and our library director. So, okay. And both got, and both got positive, you know, I'm both got very positive reviews too. And also there was the inspections in land use clerk. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped her. Yeah. 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 And she's, yes, been doing a lot. Yep. Yep. I know there are questions with public safety admin. Um, that one fell double digits below two, correct? It was not. It was only like, oh, 11 percent. I went up like 15 percent if they were, because they said the 10 percent. Okay. And well, so it might have been, and I might have missed that one, Margaret. I thought that's what it was. I'll just, I'll double check that. Okay. The thing about that too, but public safety. Yeah, that was, that was one that we had brought questions up about because um, we wanted to get some more of the local towns with that one. Yeah, you know, right. in particular, because but also, yeah. And did we get any in input at all from the fire? I felt like that was purely written by one of the two. I mean, she. It seems to me she's under both supervisors, and I think that it would have been better if we had both input. Yeah, um, and we can follow up on additional input on that. And then the library. So actually, I think we, we did pretty good in terms of um, the ones that we thought, the ones that we've been talking about all along that we were kind of concerned about. So that's, that's good news. I mean. Right. And I did uh, miss one. We do have one fire position that we just do need to discuss somewhat because none of the other towns even have that position and it's yep. one of our highest paid okay members right. yeah i just think it needs to be just so we feel better about it or the townspeople feel better about it yep okay all right so i think we need to dig a little bit deeper. And if Sandy has any of that information, we can um, try and utilize that. But in the meantime, um, I will, um, our, our committee should go through the um, information a little bit more, see what we can come up with for, for an increase 
for these folks to at least get them up and up to like a new minimum. Although we don't know what the new minimum is yet, but at least we could do the bump up to get them closer so that the uh, fiscal year 22 budget won't, um, so that they'll have some knowledge that these are gonna be changing. And we are gonna try to do some type of a COLA this year because that was not given last year, correct? Right, right. So the um, information, Sue and Tom, that um, we sent the committee, and we're more than happy to listen to any input that our accountant or that our town administrator has for us. But in looking up all of um, what, the way we've done it in the past in the way that I know that it was done by the um, uh, Board of Selectmen prior to personnel taking this over um, and pulling the same exact data. Um, it looks like for the 12 months ended September 2020, the, um, the COLA um, or the Consumer Price Index showed that it was a um, between a 0.6 and a 0.7 um, change in, in for consumers. So in that realm, in the past, that's what we've chosen to go with for a COLA. However, given the circumstance that we did not have a COLA last year um, due to COVID and everything else that's going on, I, I'd like to bring to the committee and um, and please, I, I would, we would welcome any input from both of you as well. I'd like to make a recommendation that we, we consider um, the 0.7 to, to 1.0% for a COLA um, for, the, for everybody this year. But that also, we need to talk about steps as well, because the steps, um, Sandy had not made a clear recommendation on that yet, and we hadn't really talked about that, but if we're going to go with steps for folks, then I would pull back that recommendation on the COLAs. Well, we're not going to do a step for everyone, correct? I thought we discussed it last year that we do not give an automatic step for right. all employees. Right. I just didn't know if Sandy's, all the, in, the data she was presenting, whether she, that was something she was going to recommend to us or not. Mandy had said that she um, will provide uh, recommendations on the award of steps. However, she did hear, I know the personnel committee, when you met with her, the personnel yes. committee discussed the fact that automatic COLAs, no, I'm sorry, automatic steps aren't awarded here. So okay. she does understand that. She'll make recommendations and then the personnel okay. committee can. Okay. okay. Awarded. So, Margaret, in your, you know, all the years and all your experience as a town administrator, um, how often have you seen towns do just 1% COLA? Uh, unfortunately, quite often. Okay. <laughs> unfortunately. Okay. Well, those of us who have been in this business for a long time, uh, June would know too. Um, we have been through some real serious economic dips. And so yep. in years like that, and it could be multiple years, uh, there are low, there are lower no colas. And it's, um, it's a very, very delicate balance because um, it does start affecting, um, it does start affecting employees as far as wanting right. to, um, wanting to, um, organized unions, um, right. employees leaving for, you know, for greener pastures and things like that. So, um, you, you know, we always try. Um, and then a, a year like last year, uh, in the coming years too, it was really, really unprecedented. And we had no idea what right. was ahead of us. Yep. So anyway, that was a long answer to your question. I've, I've seen it quite frequently where there has been 1% or and um, I would not recommend anything lower than that. It becomes like, you know. I know, I know. I, I, <laughs> one percent, I know. Well, that's why I brought it in like that because I just, um, 
it's very difficult, you know, for somebody, you know, when you tell them, oh, a 0.6% is, is like, yeah, I have, um, I have also seen where that fraction of a percent has been increased to the whole, the whole percent. Okay. So okay. it's been rounded to the whole percent. Um, that's typically what we see unless it's over 1% and then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to, um, I do, I did not go on the Google groups before our meeting tonight. Hi, I'd like to recognize the town accountant. Um, I did um, take a quick peek at what the Mass Municipal oh, HR good. people yeah. did. Um, and I did print off what they had. And what it looks like is that for the year we're in right now, they actually did give mostly, most towns gave COLAs. Um, so they ran anywhere from 1% to 2%. The majority were 2%, a couple 2.25, 2.5, 3%. 1.25. So most towns actually did give an actual COLA this year. Even um, in the, even with the fiscal year and where we are and yeah, I mean yeah. I seem to be the only one that I had gone in and changed it and said that you know with the COVID we changed it to zero. Um, yeah. and we did level funding this year, but most of them had it come in. I mean, I'm going to say probably half of them were union. So if the union got an increase, then the right. employees got one too. Um, so far, just what was plugged into the numbers for fiscal year 22 um, looks like 1.522 1.75. But those were all zeros in the current year. Okay. So, so like um, a couple of them that gave a zero, they actually, looks like they gave a little bit this year. I yep. mean, for next year. Okay. Um, but most of them, nobody put in anything. They're all still in negotiations for contracts. And yep. I think yep. a lot of people are just waiting to see what happens. Okay. Could right. we do that, June? Could we financially do more than 1%? Probably not a lot more, but it, because we gave zero last year, if we right. were to say it was 1.2. I would say that we would have to do a calculation to see what would the actual increase overall would be. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that number would be off the top of my head, but again, this coming year, we don't have a police contract yet either. So, no. Oh. Hmm. Okay, so we meet in another, let's see, um, two weeks, right? So be, because of this, and it seems like they really do need to get these numbers. Would it be better if we were to meet next week? Yeah, I can. Would I can. That, would that help you, June and Margaret, or no? Well, yeah. actually, no. Okay. The budget packages are going to be done up on Friday. This Friday, oh. ended out over the weekend because. Next week is our budget meetings, uh -huh. um, but that doesn't mean that we can't say to them, okay, do your expenses now yeah. and we'll give you a little bit more guidance on what the personnel has decided. Um, as long mm -hmm. as they have enough time to do the calculations because all their budgets have got to be backed by November 30th. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so if we do the two weeks and have, oh, we may still want to get together and discuss it too. Yeah. So we are ready for yeah. the middle of November for them. Right. Right. Um, and you'll want to, yeah, and, and I'm sure you're going to want to, uh, hopefully Sandy will come back with something and give you um, a, a, some sort of guidance um, on those positions, again, that need to be adjusted uh, up to um, within yes. market. Yep. Yep. That'd be great. So would we think about Tom and Sue, would you rather, should we think about two weeks from now and now give us a, and Sandy a little bit more time? What do you think, Margaret? Do you think she might be able to get, I know she's out straight too. Believe me. Well, we all are, but we're entering budget season now and we really do have to do something. And it, in fact, you know, these, these positions that have been found to be below market, we actually did budget to 
for this year to, yeah. uh, to start making these adjustments. So it would be great to have those made by say January 1st for the second yeah. half of the year anyway. Yeah. Um, so I will, I'm going to try to push Sandy to, for, the, for two weeks. I'm going to try to push, push her to see if we can get something two weeks from now. Okay. And that way we can at least give our, give some um, amounts in terms of the increases for the what the positions that are far behind. And then also at the same time, we'll come up with a recommended COLA. To, now, does that need to, that needs to go to the Board of Selectmen as well, yes. right? Okay. Yes. So that would go to the board on the 23rd. Um, if the, yeah, the personnel committee can make the recommendation on the 18th and bring it to the board on the 23rd. Margaret, do you think we could figure out a way to find out how much like a 1% COLA would be versus a 2% COLA? Yeah, I would like to hear that. I would like to see yeah, what happy. can do. Because yeah, these people, they didn't get one last year. Yeah, okay. would you um, be thinking of doing that on straight across the board or would it just be hourly employees? A good question. We didn't really, I think we figured everybody. Um, or we could I'm do it for, separate. I'm for hourly employees right now. So if we just do it separate, how's that? I, we could do one for the hourly people and then one for our salary. Um, yeah, just because I'm, I mean, you look at those, that chart, our salaried employees are so far above market. You know, they're the ones that are above are our mm -hmm. salaried employees. Right. And until we figure out what the budget is and this COVID is over, I think we need to to keep the bootstrap tight. Yep. That's a good point. There is absolutely nothing that would prevent you from awarding a certain COLA to hourly employees and another to salaried employees. Yep. Okay. That'd be more with that um, we can do a total cost impact um, but I'm gonna have to because we don't know those adjustments yet for the low paid employees we'll do it uh, based on current wages okay that's okay. good I'm surprised June hasn't calculated that out sitting right there <laughs> Isn't she funny? Yeah, just plug it right into that little formula you got going there. I know, I know. There's a lot of formulas going right I now. Know. So. I know. I'm teasing. Anyway, um, a lot, a lot for you guys to do. A lot for us to do. Um, I didn't have much more on the agenda for tonight, but is um, happy to entertain any other agenda items that anybody else would like to discuss. No, just, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, just June. for budget purposes. Yeah, um, I was gonna bring that. Yeah, I just wanna confirm then is that we'll pretty much just tell them that as of right now, hold off on doing um, any type of payroll um, calculations until you all can get back to them probably around the 23rd ish 24th the week of the week of the 23rd it would be if the board um, approves the okay I mean the only other thing I can think of is do we have them just do it as level funding their work on their budgets based on level funding and then if they should hear anything from the personnel directly then those are the pay raises that will be um, considered as far as so if you guys approve any steps that's the only thing that would make them go up and then it would be based on wait and see what the COLA would be um, to make any other further adjustments because I'm just thinking so we can start with the budget process to see what kind of funds we actually have versus what some of our expenses are going to be. Yeah. It's going to make it easier for us to kind of backtrack too. If we say level fund wages, when yeah. those calculations come in, we could actually help with those rather than having them guess. Yeah. Okay. Sue and Claire, can I ask a question? Sure. How many people do you think on that sheet, Sue, that you did that 
by the way, a very good job. Thank uh, you. <laughs> would be would be steps. A lot. No. Like five or six. Seven. Or was there seven? Was I don't even think seven. I think seven sounds because it was some clerks. We had yes. clerks. We had library. Okay. Um, so those steps are the market wage adjustments plus a step, or well, are they? That's oh, all. That's oh. to be discussed. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Position about that I think we should keep open. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm. I'm thinking, listening, and saying. Well, if we're going to give this person a step and an increase, it's, is that going to screw them up as far as budgeting? I think we need to see what's happening when we figure it out. Okay. I just want to... No, you're yeah. right. You're obviously okay. right. That was my question of the night. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> nice Good job, job, John. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> um, I will take a look at some of this information too, and if there's anything else um, that we need prior to our, our next meeting. Because um, usually it's, today's the 4th. So well, we can't do the 11th. It's so Veterans be, Day. Next mm -hmm. week's the 11th, so it'd be the 18th. You're right. So the 18th yeah. and then going to the Board of Selectmen on the 23rd. Yep. June, that's okay? That'll work for you? It will have to work for me. Okay. <laughs> I feel like why we've got a plan. We've got a plan. I mean, I'll be honest with you too, is also keep in mind is just, I hate saying it this way, but even if you were to approve step increases and pay increases, if they don't get it in their budget at town meeting, then it doesn't happen. And I think that's one of the other things too. So don't necessarily use money. Yep as your reasoning behind some things um yeah. even if it means that it may not be able to be done this year mm -hmm. do you know what i mean so yep. just also keep that in mind too okay the good the good news the good news here is that there was that recognition by the finance committee when they did the contingency line item and the board yeah that there were positions that had fallen significantly behind so yep. at least you have one step here that they they get they've right. heard and they understand it yeah yeah and they did approve some of them before this covid hit yes so. they did yeah okay good and i still we still have our report from last year that we did for the board of selectmen that would um have mm -hmm. that information in it as well for the positions that were behind yes all right all right. Anything else? Anyone? Sue? I just have one quick food for thought for the other two committee members. Is we seem to be getting to a hole when we have a five week, a five Wednesday month. Yeah. And I'm wondering if we should just start something that we say every other week. It always seems like if we have five Wednesdays in a month, we're skipping to like, or if somebody can't get us into our meeting, you know, we're skipping three weeks and then we do get a big log jam. So I wonder if we should just start saying every other week. Okay. Just something to think about. I don't think we need to decide it tonight. Okay. Because I got to look is usually, uh, what's today? Today's Wednesdays. I know the assessors usually have their meetings on Wednesdays too. The finance committee oh, does too. They actually we have a meeting. Now, oh, that's right. That's true. I go from one to the other. And, yeah. uh, but for, we just got an additional Zoom account because of these problems on like on Wednesday nights and other nights, frankly. So um, you can be booked. Um, I guess I'd be your primary booking person. I'd be your bookie. <laughs> Your bookie. And she just said that Here's your bookie. <laughs> anyway, so I could book you for whatever for whatever nights you need. Yeah. Just something to think about it. Okay. Oh. Yeah. All right. And um, I know that 
I think the assessors have what the, the second and the fourth Wednesday or something like that. We had the first and the third for a while. So let's see where that brings us. So I'll take a look at that too. Right, just if Thank there's, you. it just seems like when we have five Wednesdays, we get a little bit of a log jam and then we end up needing to add an extra meeting or. Yep, yep. okay, all right. All right, any other business? No, I've already, I've already emailed Sandy, so Beautiful. I'm on it. Oh my <laughs> word, thank you. Um, okay, no other business to discuss. I'd like to make a uh, motion that we adjourn. Any discussion? I'll second it. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor, aye. Claire, Two, aye. Tom's muted. Again? Oh, no, <laughs> no, there he is. <laughs> so we'll return <laughs> at 7.21 p.m.